Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of Game and Tinker. Take a look at this CPU. Maybe not this CPU explicitly. Um, the CPU I actually want to look at is not this one. It's inside my home rig, which is not this one. It's, it's an off-screen computer, you'll see it later. Recently, I've been thinking about whether it was even a good idea for me to buy this CPU. So, I'm a CPU geek. I love CPUs to death. I love collecting them. I love benchmarking them. It's my thing, you know? But there are other CPUs on the market that might be more powerful than this one, especially for the money. The used market is just as, you know, you gotta research it just as much as you have to research the new market. So, just what is this little thing? The CPU we're looking at today is the Intel Xeon X5470. This processor has four cores and four threads with a base clock of 3.33 GHz. When this CPU launched in late 2008, it very possibly could have been the strongest processor available on the Socket 771 platform. It probably still is. But the reason we're reviewing it today is instead because this great performance also translates to the much more popular Socket 775 platform. As it turns out, with a couple quick modifications, you can allow your workstation class processor to function inside a consumer-grade Socket 775 motherboard. But there's a catch to this. You need to have a motherboard that can talk to it. Not all motherboards will support a Socket 771 Xeon processor unless it has the correct chipset. So if you're using a Core 2 Duo or a Core 2 Quad-based system and you want to upgrade your processor to this one, you might be out of luck. If you've got the right chipset, that's great. For you, this review is largely over. I can recommend you go out and buy this processor if you're not looking to change your platform. But for the majority of you who don't have that, or if you're just interested in building a new system with used parts, let's say for the sake of argument that you go out and buy a motherboard with one of these chipsets. Will the money you spend be worth it? To find out, I'm pitting the Xeon X5470 against two similarly priced CPUs from the used market. First up is the Core i3-2120, a two-core, four-thread processor with a base clock speed of 3.3 GHz. On sites like eBay, you can find this CPU for about $15 to $20. Second is the Core i5-2500, a legendary quad-core processor with the same base clock of 3.3 GHz. This CPU, along with the Xeon itself, is available for about $30 to $35 on sites like eBay. Finally, to give the Xeon the edge it needs, I'm going to be overclocking it to 4 GHz. Now, with that out of the way, let's introduce the test systems. This is my home rig, red and blue, which normally hosts the Xeon processor. Inside is a Gigabyte GA EP45 UD3P motherboard, containing a P45 chipset as well as 8GB of 800MHz DDR2 memory. Normally, I couple this with a GTX 580, but in order to isolate CPU performance, I'll be adding my GTX 1066GB graphics card. Swapping graphics cards out is a much easier process than swapping out a CPU, and I was able to complete the process within a matter of minutes. Here is the resulting system that will be used to test the Xeon. On the other hand, the Dell Optiplex 9010 had its heart pulled out, sold on eBay, the corpse was dismembered, and the body parts were rearranged into this test bench. I'm using the OEM motherboard from the Optiplex as well as the 8GB of 1333 MHz DDR3 memory that came out of it. The same GTX 1060 will also be used. This is the test system I'll be using to benchmark the i3 and i5 processors. Now that we've introduced our test systems, it's time to get the benchmarks underway. I'll be starting with a host of CPU benchmarks, then I'll be moving on to some gaming benchmarks so that you get an idea of all-around performance. First up is Cinebench R15, where the i5 wins over the i3 and Xeon in multi- and single-core scores. Here the Xeon and i3 earned identical single-core scores, suggesting similar gaming performance. Next up is Passmark, which has the i5 winning again in overall performance, though the i3 and Xeon trade blows, with the i3 earning a better single-threaded score. In 7-Zip, the lack of four true cores on the i3 hurts it in the built-in benchmark. The Xeon and the i5 take the top, with the i5 winning by just a small margin. This shows that compression and decompression are heavily multi-threaded tasks. Lastly for the CPU benchmarks, we have Asus RealBench, in which the i3 loses handily to the Xeon and i5, and while the i5 only wins barely in some tests, it still comes out on top everywhere. Now we move on to the gaming benchmarks. Here I attempted to use games and settings in which the CPU would become the bottleneck rather than the graphics card. For this purpose, I tested Rise of the Tomb Raider, CSGO, and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, with each running at 1080p and low settings. Rise of the Tomb Raider sees performance scale up, with the Xeon losing to both the i3 and the i5. This suggests that the game relies more heavily on the better single-threaded performance of the Sandy Bridge processors. CSGO shows interesting results, with the i3 losing to both the Xeon and i5. I want to draw attention to this figure, as it may either suggest I use the incorrect settings when benchmarking the i3, 
or CSGO relies more heavily on multi-threaded performance than expected. However, we do see that the Xeon unfortunately still loses to the i5. Finally, we have PUBG, in which the Xeon once again performs the worst out of the three processors. Again, this suggests better single-threaded performance is the key to victory in this title. So, now we have reached the point where it's time to analyze our results. We've learned that the Xeon X5470, while it is decently powerful as a CPU, is no match to the great value that is the i5-2500. That said, you may already have hardware which supports one of these two options. For example, if you already have a motherboard that will support it, it may be advisable to stick to the Xeon if you're willing to sacrifice a bit of performance while you're saving money. But there's also the question of upgradability. The Sandy Bridge line of processors was quite unique in that the motherboards they worked with were forwards compatible with Ivy Bridge with the use of a single BIOS update. This means that, while the abilities of the i5 and i3 we reviewed today were decent, you could upgrade the processor later to as high as the i7-3770. Meanwhile, there was nothing more powerful than the Xeon X5470 ever released on its platform, meaning a CPU upgrade is out of the question unless you also upgrade the motherboard. Also, do keep in mind that these results were obtained with an overclocked Xeon processor. That means you will need to have adequate cooling to keep your CPU from thermal throttling, if your motherboard isn't capable of overclocking, or you're just not confident with it, then this is another reason to steer clear of the Xeon. So, what is my conclusion? Unless you already have your hands on some hardware which can support it, there really isn't much reason to go with the Xeon for your next build. If you want to upgrade your existing Socket 775 system, and you already have a motherboard with a chipset that'll support it, great, go out and buy it. But if, keep in mind that if you're going to upgrade your CPU again, you will have to replace your motherboard. So that's going to do it for today, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this helped some of you guys kind of figure out where you want to be as far as purchasing this processor goes. So I'll see you next week. I look forward to seeing you all. Bye.